I'm back. The 2019 NHL draft was in Vancouver this weekend, and it shaped up to be a good one. Basically, every team in the league came into the weekend with all kinds of storylines. Do the Sens trade CeCe? There was a lot of talk about their picks. Do they move them? What will the Leafs do? Marlowe, Zaitsev, Marner, Kapanen, Janssen, Brown, Kadri? Do any of them go? Does Ken Holland and the Edmonton Oilers get an offer for Jesse Pugliarvi? With Vancouver hosting, can they make a splash? Does Vegas clear any cap space? Do any of the other pending RFAs get traded? There was all kinds of storylines coming in, and it shaped up to be real exciting. Excitement? Ha! How cute! You want to see excitement? Try having two of the three best players in the league one week away from changing teams! Yes, we get it. The NBA actually does exciting things. But this is hockey, and hockey fans are excited. And then everyone tunes in for late night coverage of day one of the draft, and literally nothing happens. Just one measly pick swap between Philly and Arizona. The Yotes moved up, while the Flyers moved down, and got a pick as a result. Yay. But, while there wasn't really much exciting in terms of player movement, there were still some draft picks to be made. Day one was the first round of the draft, so let's go through the first few picks. The Devils took Jack Hughes number one, the Rangers took Capo Caco number two, and in a bit of a surprise, the Chicago Blackhawks took Kirby Dak number three. Hughes and Caco went as expected. Dak was a little bit of a shock to me anyway. And then came the fourth pick, and for Sens fans, oh boy did their ears perk up. And not because it was a pick the Sens actually get to make, but because it was a pick they gave away to Colorado in the Matt Duchesne trade. So with the fourth pick, the Colorado Avalanche select, Bowen Byram. Okay. That one hurts a little bit, but I still think I'd rather have Brady Kachuk last year than Byram this year. Ironically enough, the same reason the Sens didn't have the fourth overall pick is the same reason they did have the 19th overall selection. They give up the fourth overall pick to get Matt Duchesne, and then get the 19th overall pick to give away Matt Duchesne. So with the 19th pick, in the first round of the 2019 NHL Entry Draft, the Ottawa Senators select... Lassie Thompson. Huh? Well, that was a pick that came a little bit out of left field. Any of the mock drafts I saw had Thompson going as a second round pick, and the Sens take him 19th? All the reports I've read had him being an excellent puck mover with a terrific shot. The Finnish defenseman just finished his first season in North America playing with the Kelowna Rockets, where he scored 17 goals and 41 points to lead all rookie defensemen in Western Hockey League scoring. With the way the NHL is going, that should be a perfect fit. Add in the fact that he's a right shot defenseman, and the Sens could have a future core that looks something like Shabbat, Bernard Docker, Brandstrom, and Thompson. That's not a bad core. But the Sens director of scouting did compare him to Tory Krug and Matt Grizzlick. So it's kind of a question of, Krug is a good player, but is he a 19th overall pick? Only time will tell how the pick actually turns out, but the Sens seem excited, and there is some fit, so it doesn't seem that bad. They really liked him, and they weren't sure he was going to be available by the time they picked again. So I guess you've got to give them that. But I still wonder if they couldn't have maybe looked to move down a little bit further and get an extra pick as well. Now the one really nice thing about Thompson is he has a lot of options going into next season. Being a Finnish player and agreeing to come over to Canada, he has the option of playing with the Kelowna Rockets next year, who are guaranteed to be in the Memorial Cup as they are hosting, or... And he has talked about this with teammates before. He has the possibility of going back to Finland to play against men next season. Those options could be good, but Thompson also has two others. Because of his Finnish ties, he could also go directly to the American Hockey League next season. Or, if somehow he's good enough, he could play with the NHL Sens as well. Do I see that happening? Basically zero chance of that. But the American Hockey League is an intriguing option. 
virtually zero players that come out of the draft have that opportunity, so it'll be interesting to see what the Sens decide to do. Having him play against professional players on the North American ice as an 18 year old might not be such a bad option, but they better make sure he's ready for the American Hockey League game before they throw him in. Let's not destroy this guy's development before he even has a chance to grow. And with that, day one of the draft is over for Sens fans. Not so fast! Pierre Dorio is talking to Kyle Dubas! Oh my god, no Pierre! Run! Thankfully for the Sens and their fans, whatever nonsense Kyle Dubas was trying to pull, Pierre Dorio was having none of it, and nothing ever came of their conversation. At least not yet. So that does it for day one of the draft. That was really uninteresting. But day two, the GMs finally got to work. There were plenty of moves on day two, and one of the first moves of the day was huge. Over the last few years, the New Jersey Devils have been able to add Taylor Hall, Nico Heischer, and with the first pick on Friday night, Jack Hughes. So Saturday morning, they load up on a defenseman and acquire P.K. Subban. Wow. Subban goes to the Devils, while the Predators acquire defenseman Jeremy Davies and Steven Santini, as well as a 2019 second round pick and a 2020 second round pick. Man. <sighs> what do you even say? First of all, Ray Shiro is a miracle worker. He turns Adam Larson into Taylor Hall straight up, then uses the magic of Taylor Hall to get Nico Heischer and Jack Hughes, and then gets P.K. Subban. If the Devils can figure out any way to stop the puck next season, look out. And on the Pred side of this, this has to be part of a bigger move, right? You just gave away one of the better defensemen in the league for a bunch of lottery tickets, destroying what was arguably the best defensive core in the league, all for $9 million in cap space? That has to be so they can go after guys like Duchesne and Panarin, right? Right? The Predators sure better hope so. Speaking of cap space, one of the teams I brought up at the beginning of this video made some cap space of their own. Patrick Marlowe, a first round pick and a seventh round pick, went from Toronto to Carolina, for a sixth round pick. You want to talk about a cap dump? That's the epitome of it. The Leafs had to ditch a first round pick to get rid of Marlowe, but at least he's gone. That should help them re-sign guys like Marner, Janssen, and Kapanen. But was it enough money? I'm sure they'll need to make other moves, like getting rid of Zaitsev, but they're off to a good start. And for the Hurricanes, this was a pretty low risk trade on their part. Now it sounds like the Hurricanes are going to buy Patrick Marlowe out, which I can't imagine Tom Dunnan is too pleased about, paying a guy to play somewhere else, but they got a first round pick from it. Yeah, it'll probably be a 20th overall pick or higher, but it's still a first rounder. Worst case scenario, you use that to acquire someone else, kind of like the Leafs did last year when they traded their first round pick to get Jake Muzzin. This is one of those trades where I really do believe both teams can walk away happy. The Hurricanes get a first round pick, the Leafs get cap space. And much like the first two trades, cap space had a huge part in the third big deal of the day. And ironically enough, it involves another team I mentioned off the top. With the hosts looking to make a splash, they are able to do just that. It wasn't a huge splash, but it was a splash nonetheless. The Vancouver Canucks acquired JT Miller from the Tampa Bay Lightning in exchange for Merrick Mazinitz, a 2019 third round pick and a 2020 conditional first round pick. Should the Canucks miss the playoffs in 2020, the first rounder would be pushed to 2021. Again, this is another one of those, the trade works out good for both teams. The Canucks get a pretty solid top six forward, the Lightning get cap space and a first round pick. But as a Sens fan, can I make one request to the rest of the NHL? Police stop helping out the Lightning! And speaking of a team the rest of the NHL just can't stop themselves from helping out, the Chicago Blackhawks got in on the action. The Blackhawks traded John Hayden to the New Jersey Devils for John Quinville. It's a little ironic, really. The Blackhawks fired Joel Quinville 
and not even a year later, they trade for his nephew, John. This is a bit of an interesting move for the Blackhawks. It really doesn't shed any salary, and they move a guy out in Hayden, who is actually a pretty decent NHLer, for a guy in Quinville who had trouble making it in the NHL, but was a point-of-game player in the AHL. Maybe they see something in him that the Devils didn't. I guess we'll find out. There were 20 other trades made on day two of the draft, including one for former Sen Tom Pyatt, but most of them were just for picks. While we'll skip over most of them, there is one we'll focus on, as it does matter to most people that watch this channel. Another one of the questions I asked off the top that got answered in the affirmative, the Sens moved some of their picks. The Sens traded picks 44 and 83 to the Carolina Hurricanes in exchange for pick 37. But before the Sens could make that selection, they had another selection to make, the number 32 pick. And with that pick, the Sens selected Shane Pinto. Like Thompson in the first round, Pinto was a bit of a surprise pick for the Sens early in round two. There were many players still on the board who were expected to go higher in the draft, but the Sens selected Pinto. And like Thompson, he was a guy the scouts really couldn't agree on, as he had a wide range of spots that he could be selected in the draft. Pinto spent last season playing in the United States Hockey League, where he enjoyed a really solid season, scoring 32 goals and 68 points in 62 games. That led him to being named to the USHL All-Rookie Team and earned him a commitment to the University of North Dakota. Admittedly, I don't know a ton about Pinto, but I do know that UND is an NCAA powerhouse and he should do nothing but grow in that system. Add in the fact he has the potential to play with other Sens prospects, Johnny Tyconic, and Jacob Bernard Docker next season at UND, and it's nothing but great news for the Sens. Plus, he's a center. You can never have enough centers. So is it a great pick? Well, it didn't look like it, but you never really know until the draft is over. So let's hope Pinto grows, and let's hope that UND helps him get to where he needs to be. Then, five picks later, thanks to the trade with Carolina, the Sens were up again. And with this pick, the Sens take goaltender Mad Sogard from the Medicine Hat Tigers. A goalie. Really? Like the Sens don't have enough of those. The Sens currently have six goaltenders under contract, and thanks to the draft, they have nine on their listed players. There's the obvious ones. We've got Anderson, Nilsson, Condon, Hogberg, Gustafson, and Decord. Then last year, the Sens took Kevin Mandelies, who should be able to go back to junior. And ironically enough, the year before, they took Sogard's teammate, Jordan Hollett. Last season, Hollett and Sogard split time, so they were able to bounce off each other. But next year, Sogard will probably be there on his own, so it's going to be his team. How that affects things, I guess we'll see, but I'm a little concerned about the number of goalies the Sens have. Sure, Anderson's old, Nilsson's not young, and Condon's broken, but you still have Decord, Hogberg, and Gustafson coming up. Add in the fact that Sens scout Don Boyd literally said, we believe he has the chance to play in the NHL, and you've got to ask some questions. But he did finish last season 19-8-2 with a 264 goals against and a 921 save percentage. Considering we're talking about junior hockey, and those numbers are real solid. Maybe there's something there, and boy would that be nice. And after that pick, the Sens got to sit and wait a while, as their next pick came 57 spots later. With the first pick in the fourth round, the Sens select... Victor Lodin. This pick is real interesting. Lodin is 20, so he's already been passed over in the draft twice. He spent last season playing in Sweden, admittedly against men, where he scored one goal and five points in 41 games. The Sens say that he's a late bloomer, and they've been watching him for a few years. They say he took a big step forward this year and really grew in size and strength, which led them to make this pick. But when one of your scouts is quoted as saying, but it now looks like he might be a pretty good player one day, yeah, it's a little concerning. Actually, it's a lot concerning. Something tells me this was a shot in the dark pick. And hey, maybe it works out, but I got to admit, not holding out a lot of hope. And then in the fifth round, the Sens went back to the 20-year-old pool. 
With the first pick in the fifth round, the Sens select Mark Kostelik from the Calgary Hitmen. While being passed over in the draft twice, Kostelik came back for his final season of junior hockey and exploded, scoring 47 goals, 77 points, in 66 games. He also spent last season playing as the captain of the Hitmen, so you know there's some good character there. Or at least a good leader. Add in the fact that he's a bigger guy who loves going to the net and can score goals, you've got a pretty good player there. But the Sens also say that his skating is nowhere near where it needs to be. So, yeah. Although, we do remember Mark Stone and what happened with him. So there is a shot. If he can turn out to be even like 75 or 80% of Mark Stone, that's a good player. And to wrap up the draft, the Sens made one final pick in the seventh round, taking defenseman Maxence Joinette. But here's another player where the Sens say, yeah, this is a kid who has a chance to be a good player one day. When you're saying has a chance to be a good player one day, a little concerning to me. Shouldn't he be at least a decent player or a good player now? I mean, we're talking about the best 200-ish, 18 to 20 year olds in the world. Now he did register 32 points in 68 games in his draft year in the queue. So he's got a bit of an offensive touch. Let's just have to see if it can continue to grow it. So overall, the Sens used their six selections to take three centers, two defensemen, and a goalie. If even three or four of those guys can be key players for the Sens in the future, I'll be happy. It looks like the Sens took a lot of risk, so let's hope there's a lot of reward. As for what's next, well, free agency kicks off starting Wednesday, so I'll probably be back maybe Tuesday to go over what the Sens have done over the last couple months and look at what they could do in the next couple of weeks. Until then, I guess we'll take it easy, let me know what you thought of the Sens draft picks, hit like, share the video, and we'll see you later. Oh, and I guess if you could subscribe too, that would be great as well. See you Tuesday night.